table. Good girl, good girl. Hi, welcome to this Take Your Child to Work Day event. My name is Cindy Miner. This is my two-year-old Portuguese water dog, Kiki. And I am the Deputy Director of the Office of Science Policy, Engagement, Education, and Communications for the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute, which is part of the National Institutes of Health, or NIH. Now, NHLBI helps make the world a better place by finding new ways to prevent and treat illnesses related to the heart, lung, and blood, as well as sleep disorders. Through this work, we help adults and children stay healthy so that they can live longer and healthier lives. But did you know that pets also help people live longer, healthier lives? In fact, science has shown recently that having a dog, for example, can help a person reduce high blood pressure, can help them reduce their cholesterol levels, and lead to overall healthier heart um, and cardiovascular and reduce those diseases. And it's also a good excuse to get out there to be more active and go for a walk and, and work and play with your dog. All of these are important things that help reduce your risk factors for various diseases, including heart disease and uh, mental health as well. So what I wanna to talk to you about today is not related to heart health, but it's actually related to your relationship with your dog and how you can make that a better, more productive relationship and how you can use science to help you train your dog. So Kiki here, she's only two, so she's still kind of a puppy, but she's gonna be my demo dog. Come on, hop up, there we go. And I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about the science around learning and training a dog, and then how we can use that to get both um, good behaviors uh, from your dog around the house, as well as teaching you a few ideas that you can use to train your dog to do some tricks. How does that sound, Kiki? Sit, high five. Oh, good girl. See, she's so good. Okay, well, one of the reasons I got into science many years ago was that I became interested in how do people learn things and how do they remember things? And one of the first things I learned was about this discovery that was made in the late 1800s. And you may have heard of this. Um, you, know, you heard the idea of Pavlov's dog. Pavlov was actually a Russian scientist who was interested in the digestive system of dogs, and he was also interested in uh, dogs, why they salivate when they get food. And so what he would do was, he, would, he had this meat powder that he would spray into a dog's mouth and measure the amount of salivation. Well, so what does that have to do with learning and memory? Well, as is the case of many scientific discoveries, they found something else out just completely by accident. What they noticed is that when the lab assistant would walk into the room, the dogs would start salivating just seeing the assistant come in the room, even before they got the meat in their mouth. So it was almost like the mere action of that assistant walking into the room caused the dogs to salivate. So they were making some kind of association. I see this person, I'm gonna get something really good to eat. Well, that's actually an interesting concept. And so he started exploring that and he found that there were a number of signals that they could give a dog. So it's, for example, if a light came on and that light was associated again with getting the meat, the dog would start to salivate. They could ring a bell and the dogs would start salivating. So that pairing of a previously neutral stimulus person walking in the room with just a light coming on, a sound, was now associated with the food. That's a very powerful tool that we can use in training. And I'm gonna talk about that a little bit more, how we use that. But if we fast forward a little bit to the 1930s and 40s, another researcher named Skinner started looking at the idea of reinforcement that you could 
reinforce certain behaviors. That is, you could cause certain behaviors to increase by giving an animal, he was doing pigeons, but it could be a dog, it could be a person, it could be a rat, it could be used in lots of different animals. But if you gave a dog, for example, something really rewarding, that they would increase the behavior that they associated with that reward. So for example, if I said, sit, she now thinks she's gonna get a treat and she's right. I have some treats in my pocket and I'm gonna give her a retreat. If I say the word down, again, she gets a reward. So I'm making some pairings between the words or I can give hand signals. That's my signal for sit. That's my signal for do down. I give those hand signals. I pair that with a reward. And she's more likely to do that behavior because she wants these yummy little treats that I have in my pocket. So an important tool in training is one, having really yummy treats that they want to have. Dogs are pretty simple little creatures. They see that you have something they want and they will do anything to get it. Right now she's jumping on me. I'm not going to reward that behavior because I don't like it. Now she's giving me a down. When I see her give me a down, I'll reward that. And then she'll start laying down at random points because I like it. I start saying the word down and then she'll start giving me that behavior because she's working me to get that treat. So these, these tools between reinforcement and pairing rewards with signals are very powerful ways to train a dog. Come up here, Kiki. So if we wanna train a dog, to do a trick, for example, I can use my rewards to try to lure her into something. So how about if I wanted her to get her to sit up and beg for it? Well, I can take my treat and put it over her head so that she starts to lure up and then I reward her. Now, if I do this for a few times in a row, she'll start to do this a little bit more often to get this treat. Oops, I don't want her to stand up, but I just want her to sit up. There we go. Now the next thing I could do is try to start pairing that behavior with the cue. So I'm gonna call it sit pretty. And so when I lure her up, lure her up, sit pretty. And then she gets the reward. And so if I keep repeating this and say, sit pretty, she'll start to make that association between sitting up pretty like that and getting a treat. Sit, sit pretty. There we go. So you can start to train lots of tricks. Another fun one to do. How about if I try to ask her to get into this box? Well, she did it for me. So I'm going to reward that. Yay, good job. I'll get her out of the box. Come here, Kiki. And then again, I'll ask her, I think I'll call it go box. And then I'll start pairing when she gets in that box with the words go box. And hopefully she'll figure out go box pretty quickly that that's a trick I want her to do. Okay, good girl, go box. Oh, good job. Yay. So training tricks can actually be pretty easy. You just if you're consistent about it and you have lots of good treats. So what is another trick we can train here? Come on. A trick I find very valuable that I can turn into lots of different tricks and um, is something that I call touch, where I ask the dog to put its nose on my hand. And then the minute its nose touches my hand, I'll say, yes, you did what I want and give her a treat. So let's try that. Come on up. 
touch. Yes. So you see, she touches my hand like that. Touch, tree. There we go. I start making that association between the word, my hand out and the word touch, treat. So she'll start offering me that behavior when I start putting my hand out. Come touch, good job. Come touch, good job. You don't have to, after a while, you don't have to treat every time, but it helps to be consistent. So I can start using this hand. She's now trained to touch it. And I can get her to move around. Come here, Kiki. Kiki, come here. Touch. Here, right here. Yeah, good girl. Right here. Right here. Right here. Come on. Yeah, right here. Good girl. Good girl. Right here. Good girl. So I can start getting her to weave around my legs. We get really good at it. I can start walking. Come here, Kiki. Come on. Touch. Not quite, but you keep working on it. You just have to be patient. She'll catch on. So that's another good tool to have. Another good trick, I mean, to have is to train touch. And I'm going to show you something that your parents are probably really going to appreciate if you train your dog to do this. What I have here is just a board. And I went to the store and bought some sandpaper and stapled it onto the board. And using that touch command, come here, Kiki, come on. I've actually trained her to scratch the board and file her own nails. There we go. Sit. So you see she scratches. Good girl, yes. Believe me, clipping a dog's nails is something that is expensive if you have your vet or a groomer do it. But if you can train your own dog to do it, just using that simple touch command and converting it over to the board and then re rewarding her every time she puts her paw on that board, then you'll save your parents a lot of money by teaching your dog this kind of fun trick. So what are some other things that you want to think about doing when you get a dog and want to train them? And there, I think there are three very important things that you should train any dog when you first get them to do. And so I'll show you how to do those things. The first one is something called drop. Now, you know, dogs like to get into a lot of things and they may grab things that you don't want them to have. Say they grab your sock or they grab a bottle of pills that they shouldn't have and you need to get away from them. Well, you don't want to get into this situation where you're chasing the dog around and it becomes a game and they're not going to give it up and they're chewing up your stuff. So training them to drop when you say drop is a really important thing to do for your dog. And it's actually one of the easiest things to train. Come here, Tiki. So what you do when you get your dog is that, say you're in the house, you're in the kitchen doing something, and you just say the word, you get a handful of really good treats, and then you just say the word drop and put the treats on the ground. And then they get a bunch of treats. And you know, you go around, you do a few more things, and then again you say, Kiki, drop and put a bunch of things, put a bunch of treats on the ground. If you do that for, you know, just five minutes a day for just a couple of days, they'll learn very quickly that when you say the word drop, there are going to be treats on the ground somewhere. So to get those treats, they have to drop whatever is in their mouth. So this is a really good command to use for your dog to get them to drop that thing that you don't want them to have. It works great. So I'll show you an example. Something I want her to have, but it's okay. Have this little piece of rope. Take it, Kiki. Take it. Drop. There. Immediately, she lets it go. And I'm. she's scratching herself, but I'm going to reward her for letting that go. Take it. Kiki. Kiki. Take it. Drop. There we go. Good girl. Oh, one more time. Up here. Kiki. Oh, good girl. Take it. Drop. 
Yeah, good girl. So she's really good about immediately giving up whatever she has in her mouth for a treat when I say the word drop. So very important thing to teach your dog. Another really important thing to teach your dog is to come when you call them. Now, this can come in handy if your dog gets out of the house and is starting to run for the street. You want to be able to know that you can stop them and get them to come back to you. So it's very important that they have a really good recall or come command. And so one of the best ways to train this is to get a treat that you will only use to train this, nothing else. You're not gonna give them this treat for anything else. And you want it to be the treat that they like the best. For most dogs, that's bacon. So, um, but it can be other things. It might be a hot dog. It might be little pieces of steak or chicken. Um, in Kiki's case, she loves chicken. And so I will tear up little pieces of chicken and I will only use chicken for this command when I'm training this. And so again, what you wanna do is when they're distracted and kind of wandering around, maybe they're in the yard or somewhere else in the house, call them, but use a very special call, not just any word, but something that you're only gonna use for the emergency recall. And so for Kiki, I just repeat her name a bunch of times in a high pitch. And when she hears that, she knows that she's going to get that special treat that she never gets any other time. So if I'm wandering around and she's kind of distracted, I go, kee, 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 kee. she immediately comes and I give her the chicken. So again, if you do this, you know, for, you know, two or three times a day when they're not paying attention to you, but you have that special call and your special treat, go out call them when they come give them that reward and repeat that for you know maybe five or ten days you will have a great recall that you'll know that whenever they're about to get into trouble if they're you know got off the leash or something like that that they're going to come back to you so very important to spend the time to get that kind of recall from them the third thing that i think everybody should teach their dogs is getting into a crate. Now, a lot of people think that crates are a negative thing. Crates are neither positive or negative to the dog. It's what we teach them about the crate. If you're putting your dog in a crate for punishment, then it's never gonna wanna go into a crate. But if you're putting your dog into a crate and giving it some really good rewards for staying in that crate, then it's gonna love its crate. And why do you want a dog to love its crate? Well, for safety reasons. Say your dog becomes sick and you have to take him to the vet. And the vet, they're not gonna let your dog wander around the vet. They're gonna put your dog in a crate. So you want your dog to be comfortable crated up like that. If you're traveling, staying in a hotel, a lot of hotels will let you have dogs, but they want you to have a crate to put your dog in if you're not there in the room with them that moment. Um, so a crate is a very good thing for a dog. They actually love crates. I, my other dog loves his crate so much that he will ask to come out in the garage just to lay in his crate for half a day, just to be alone and, and meditate, I say. Um, so training your dog to be in a crate is a good thing. And so this is actually Kiki's crate right here. I call it her house. And what I've done is that to train that is like, I'll ask her to get into her house and then I'll give her a bunch of treats. So Kiki, in your house, come on, come on, in your house. Oh, good girl, good girl. And she actually likes to spend time in her treat, in her house. Uh, so another important, another valuable tool is they have these calm toys at the pet shops and stuff. They're really hard rubber, but what you can do is you can put a bunch of treats in there and then it has a big hole on it. So what I usually do is I'll go to the store and get some of this spray cheese stuff and I'll put a bunch of treats in here and then close up that hole with the uh, spray on cheese. And so it's a nice big 
um, container of treats that's hard to get the treats out of. And I will fill this up. Sometimes I'll put it in the freezer to make it even a little bit harder to get the treats out of there. And then when she gets in her crate, I'll actually give her this con and she will just have a wonderful time laying in her crate, chewing on her Kong treats um, very quietly while I go do other things. So the crate is a good thing. Keep it a positive thing. Um, it's their space to hang out and relax and be left alone. And so I always honor that. If she goes into her crate, I won't ever go over to her and ask her to come out of it if she doesn't want to. So. Very good thing to teach a dog to do. Drop things that they shouldn't have on command, to come when you call them, and to go into a crate. Three things that I think all dogs should learn to do. Now, I promised a few more tricks, so I'll uh, give you that. So I had this rope out. This is actually another good thing to train um, you know how I talk about touch and you could use that to train a lot of other tricks Just picking up a piece of rope and bringing it to you is Another trick that you can use to start training other more complicated tricks So when I started training this what I would do is I just throw it on the ground and then the minute that she showed some interest in it I would actually reward her and for picking this up and then I would gradually ask her to not only pick it up, but to hand it to me. And so, you know, by consistently asking her to pick it up, hand it to me, treat, you get a nice behavior that you can transfer to a lot of other tricks. Take it, bring it, give, good girl. Take it, bring it. Give, treat, good girl. Notice I treat every time. You know, that is reinforcing to her. She wants nothing more than to get that treat. So she will do lots of things to get that treat from me. So I've made an association between take it, give, treat. Okay, so that's the simple piece of rope. How can we make this more interesting? Well, what I've done with Kiki, I'll put this away. Now when she sees any kind of rope, she'll go get it and bring it to me. So I have a bag, it's actually just a laundry bag, laying on the floor over here. I can get her to help me. Kiki, go get it, bring it, come on. Yes, good girl. So now I have a dog that when it sees a rope, will bring it to me. Oh, she gave me a sit pretty. Did you see that? So she's working me for the treats. Sit pretty, there we go. So, but now I have a dog that'll actually bring me my laundry. What? Ready? Kiki, go get it. Bring it. Come on, bring it. Kiki. bring me things. We'll pick up things that I drop on the ground. What a help around the house, huh? How about that? We'll get in a box. Box, go box. Yay! So it's not magic, it's actually science. What I am doing is I'm taking what we learned from Pavlov and Skinner, and I'm using reinforcement, that is good little treats, to reinforce certain behaviors that I like. She's staying in the box really nicely. I like that. I will encourage that. Get her to come to me. Kiki, come. Sit. Come around. Come touch. Yay! So again, some basic behaviors. Touch my hand. Pick up things. Pick up a rope. Bring it to me. I can start stringing them together to do a lot of more interesting tricks. So your imagination is the limit here on what you can do with your dog. 
if you just teach them a few basics and you're very consistent about it. Kiki, up, up, up. Kiki, right here. So you want to teach your dog to shake paws. One of the things you can do is just put your hand out there and your dog will naturally paw at your hand. Oh, good girl. To get what you have, so you just reward that. Good girl. Paw. Good girl. You do that a few times and then start pairing a word with the behavior and then they start to make the connection that, huh, she says paw. If I put my paw on her hand, I get a treat. So they start making those connections very quickly if you're very consistent about it. Paw. Good girl. Good girl. So I hope some of that was helpful. Um, there's a lot of fun things that you can do with your dog um, just by using positive reinforcement, which is just another word for treats, and being consistent with them and communicating with them. And you can have the greatest dog in the world if you put in the time and effort to do these things. A few little tips though, she made it look really easy. Um, a lot of these things I've worked on before, so she's very much a dog that likes to do things for me, so she makes it look easy. Um, but training a dog takes, one, a lot of patience. Um, they don't always understand what you want, so you have to be very clear with them. Um, it's important to use very few words a dog doesn't listen in complete sentences, so usually a command is just one word said once and then rewarded. So for example, sit, good girl. So it was just one word. It wasn't, oh, Kiki, will you please sit for me? It was sit. So I'm very, be very clear what you want. Um, keep your training session short. Dogs have a limited attention span, and the younger they are, the shorter those sessions should be. Um, I usually just do five minutes here and there, um, and you know those five minutes then across uh, a few days add up to some really cool behaviors that you're seeing here today. Um, use really yummy treats. Don't use the dog's kibble. They get bored with that. So I actually go out and I buy different kinds of little training treats from the pet store. They're very small. This is one of them. This is a little piece of salmon actually, uh, made for dogs. So I can actually give her a lot of these and not give her a whole lot of calories and not fill her up. So it keeps her wanting more. So small little tasty yummy treats. I vary them. I don't always use the same treat every day. And then remember I said when you do that come, you want a very special treat that you're only gonna to use to train that come command. So for her it's chicken, it might be bacon, um, it could be other things, but only use it for that. You want that to be really special because that's a very important behavior for them to learn and keep. And then you wanna end on success. It's easy to start training and have this idea that you're going to get them to do all this stuff and they, they get tired and they just aren't getting it. Don't get frustrated. You'll get frustrated. You'll be unhappy. The dog will sense that you're frustrated and unhappy with it. And so it's just a bad situation and they're not going to want to work for you. So I always try to make it really fun and if I find that they're not learning something as quickly as I think they should, then I back off and I start just asking them to do things that I know they can do because I want every training session to end positively on success. It's very important to remember. So, and then the most important thing is have fun. The time that you put in with your dog to train them, um, is time well spent to have a really nice relationship with your dog that, um, that people are going to really envy. And um, it's just going to be such a nice bond between you and your dog um, that it's really time well spent. And again, it's good for you. So good luck with that. There's a lot of resources on the web and in the community. I live in Rockville. There's a couple of places that I highly recommend for training. Um, your dog's friend is a nonprofit in Rockville 
that offers training on positive reinforcement. Um, you might check them out. Um, they have a lot of fun classes for dogs. So have fun. Come on, Kiki. Go. Tunnel. Table. Yeah, good girl. End on success.